What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna add this volume meter for our MP3 player with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're gonna add this volume meter to our MP3 player, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for a one-time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, last video was gonna be the last video for this MP3 series that we've been working on, but a couple of you asked to do a little volume meter, so you see we've got this little thing. It's kind of, you know, wonky looking because I threw it together really quickly and you can use any sort of graphics here that you want. Uh, but uh, that's what we're going to do in this video. So this is actually kind of hacky here. There's not really a thing in Pygame that allows you to create a volume meter just with settings and things. So I just sort of hacked this together because a couple of videos ago we looked at the volume control and we saw the output. So whenever we slide this around, we know we're getting a number between zero and one. So you know, around here is like 0.25, around here is 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and at the very bottom is 1. So we can times these by 100, and this becomes 25, 50, 75, and 100. So if we know those numbers, we can just output anything we want to the screen using if statements based on those numbers. So, you know, if the number is 25 or below, put one bar up. If it's 25 to 50, put two bars up. If it's 50 to 75, oops, put three bars up. And if it's above that, put four bars up. And, you know, you could do four bars. You could do 10 bars. You can make this as detailed as you want. You know, every 10, you could put a new little bar or whatever. It's just totally up to you. I just did four just for, you know, purposes of showing you how to do it. And I created this little graphic here uh, with, uh, with Photoshop. Uh, you could use GIMP or any sort of online tool to create graphics to do anything you want. It's just a black box with, you know, some little green boxes inside of it. And there's actually five images here. So the first one is blank. That's image one. And then this is image two, image three, image four, oops, and image five. And we're just going to put them on the screen like we put any image, like these buttons, like anything uh, using Kenter. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's get to it. So first things first. Let me pull up an explorer here. And I save these in our images directory. You know, we've put our buttons in there and we're always putting images in our images directory. And this, these are the images, right? So uh, volume zero, volume one, volume two, volume three, and volume four. And I did a couple of versions, one with little dots in the, in the green bars and ones without. I will use the ones with dots. I think it looks a little bit better. And again, I just whip these images up with Photoshop or, you know, whatever graphic software you have. You could download images from free image websites with sliders and things like this. Uh, go crazy, do whatever you want. I'm just going to use these four, uh, these five images. So, okay, let's head back to our code and let's head down sort of to the bottom of our code and here we have the images for our buttons. So let's do the same thing. Uh, let's define a volume control images, right? So uh, I'm just going to call these volume zero and vol one, vol two, vol three, and vol four for volume one through four, right? And we could just kind of copy one of these and just paste it all in. Again, we're gonna use our photo image widget, set the file equal to images slash whatever. So we could just change these to a volume zero. And let me just copy this. And boom, 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 boom. So then it's volume one, two, three, and four. Now we're gonna use these in other functions. Uh, like when the play button gets pressed, we want the, these to show up in the play function because we want to do things. So I'm just going to go ahead and make each of these global. Uh, so let me just go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 0, 1, 2, 3, oops, 4. Okay, so we've defined them. Now let's put this on the screen. So how do we want to do this? Well, let's see, we've got our control frame underneath that. Let's create um, volume meter 
frame or just volume meter. So let's call this volume underscore meter. And this is going to be a label. Now before with our buttons, you know, our play buttons and our stop buttons and all those things, we put them in buttons because we want to make them clickable. We don't want to make this clickable. So we can just use a label to throw up this image. And we want to put this in our master frame. This is the one that has our volume frame already, right? So there and let's put image to equal, um, what do we want? Let's say vol four. That's this one. That is when it's all the way up. So we're going to assume the volumes all, all the way up because when you start a song by default, the volume is all the way up. Uh, you could also put this at vol zero if you wanted it to be blank before a song is played, something like that. You could do that. Um, in fact, maybe we'll do that. So we'll leave it at vol zero. And now let's go volume underscore meter dot grid. We want to grid this guy. And we want to put this in row one, a column equals one. And let's give this a pad X of like 10. So if you remember, this is the master frame right here. So we've got row zero, which is the playlist and the volume control. Underneath that would be row one would be right here. Right. So we want to put this in not column zero, which would be the playlist column, but we want to put it in column one, which is underneath the volume, right? Okay. And while we're looking at the volume label frame, this is the slider, let's give this a little bit more padding. So let's make this 30. Uh, because before this was over a little bit further to the left here, but we want to kind of center it in the middle of this. So let's give it a little bit extra padding, pad x to push it over a little bit so that it's, you know, over sort of in the middle of this thing. So okay, let's go ahead and save this and just see what that looks like. So let's go Python player.py. And okay, we've got this little box here. And maybe this isn't the greatest spot to put it, but, but this is sort of an afterthought. You guys asked me to do this, so I didn't really design it where to put this thing. And we have some space right here, so I just kind of slapped it in right there. So okay, now it doesn't actually do anything, but it's in and it, it looks okay. So okay, let's head back over to our code then. Now we need to figure out how to change this thing and when to change it. So when we want to change it is when the volume slider gets changed, or when the volume slider moves. So let's head to our volume function. And let's create a comment to say, uh, change volume meter picture, I guess, right. So we need to know what the current volume is. So that's these things right here. So let's uncomment these or at least this one here. And remember, this is current volume equals pi game mixer uh, dot music dot get volume. And remember, this returns a float, right? So it's between zero and one. And okay, we could work with that number. But let's, let's just times this by 100. And uh, let's go current volume equals current volume times 100. And let's comment this uh, times by 100 to make it easier to work with. So instead of working with decimals, now we're working with, you know, uh, almost integers. So instead of it being 0.25, it'll be 25, right? In my mind, it's just easier to work with 25 than it does work with 0.25. It's kind of silly, but whatever. So now we've got the current volume, we can run some if statements. So let's go if and let's also take this and may and use the integer of it. So let's go if the integer of our current underscore volume, because we don't want it to be 25.008 or something, we just want it to be 25. That's sort of better. So if the integer of the current volume is less than one, that means if it's zero, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to set the volume meter dot config, that's that label, right, we want to send the image, we want to set the image uh, to equal vol zero, right. So if it's less than zero, show nothing, just show the black box, right. And now we can do an elif statement, elif. And let me just copy this. So if else, basically else, if the, the integer of the current volume is greater than zero, 
and the integer of the current volume is, let's say, less than or equal to 25, what do we want to do? We want to set the volume underscore meter dot config image to equal vol one. All right? Now I'm just going to copy this a few more times. So this is one, two, three, four. So if it's between, oh, hold on, we missed something there. If it's, there we go. So if the current volume is greater than zero and less than or equal to 25, so between zero and 25, or equal to 25, show volume one. And let me just change this to two, three, four, right? And so if it's greater than, these are all gonna be equal to, so if it's greater than or equal to what, 25, and less than or equal to 50, so if it's between 25 and 50, including 25 and including 50, then show the second little image. If it's greater than or equal to 50, and less than or equal to 75, then show the third one. And if it's greater than or equal to 75, and less than or equal to 100, show volume four. So, okay, let's just go ahead and save this and run it. Now notice if we move this, it, it works. And we're gonna have to fix that in a minute, but there's not actually a song playing right now. So let's add a song just to make sure. Let's play it. So that's zero, zero. All right, that seems to work. But again, we don't want it have to toggle this for this to show up. So what we can do is come back to our code and let's grab all of this that we just did, copy it and take it up to our play function as well. So let's see, here's our play. And let's just come down here to the bottom of our play function and paste this in. So now all of this will work when we press play. So let's save this, run it again. Let's add some songs, Zoop. grab one, hit play, boom, immediately it pops up to four when we start to play it. Now we could do the same thing for the stop button probably, because now the volume is at zero, or you could just leave it there because when we start to play again, it's gonna be, you know, whatever it is. I don't know, you can mess around with that if you want, but basically that's how this works. So, you know, pretty basic concept. And like I said, you can get as creative as you want with creating the graphics for this little thing here, make it the size you want, the color you want. You're gonna have to use Photoshop or GIMP or, you know, GIMP is like a free open source version of Photoshop. It's not quite as powerful, but you could do basic things like that or any online graphic creation software, or you can go to fiverr.com and have some guy whip one up for you for five bucks, you know. Whatever you want to do, you go to a free website. I'm sure you can find free image websites that have uh, image mixer control graphics like this little thing. Uh, you could probably find something that you, that you like. And again, I use sort of big boxes here uh, because I only wanted to do four just to show you how to do it. But you could do a hundred if you want. So every second that moves, you know, it goes up. It just be as creative as you want to be. And that's all there is to it. So I think this is probably the end of this MP3 player uh, series, uh, you know, unless somebody else has another idea that they want me to take a look at. If enough of you, you know, have ideas, we'll keep going. But uh, I think that's the end of this MP3 player. It was, you know, a very basic MP3 player, but I think we learned some cool stuff and uh, I'm happy with it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.